Mariners have picked up another reliever and they signed him for a one-year deal. Who is it? Well, someone I probably wouldn't have thought of them touching. Rival. Let's get into it. Oh, beautiful pitch. Welcome to Everyday Touch the Bases Podcast. We will make this a very quick video just going over the Mariners, my home team. So if you're a Mariner fan, welcome and subscribe. Like the video at the very end if you enjoy it. But we're going to go over a relief pitcher that they decided to pick up. Jerry's still cooking even though we're going into the end of spring training, which by the way, PSA announced me if you guys are going to be at opening day. I will be at opening day as well. So you see me, say what's up. It'd be, be cool to see you guys. Uh, small channel, right? Got to see my OG subscribers. The Mariners have picked up Ryan Stanek, a previous relier for the last three years with the Houston Astros, which is why I said kind of surprised that they would even get their, you know, dealings with the devil. He signed off of the free agents list and he has a pretty impressive background for at least 2022, 2023 kind of fell off a little bit. And there were some stats I had to review twice because MLB.com actually had some stuff wrong. So I had to confirm it, get you guys the real details on this guy. He signed a one-year deal. I haven't been able to confirm the amount of money that we're paying him. So who knows what we have left in the budget for the rest of the season or even going into the trade deadline. But like I said, he pitched for three years for the Astros. He's a right-handed pitcher. In 2022, he was able to put up a 1.15 ERA out of 59 games and 54 innings pitched. He struck out 62 batters and had a whip of 1.23. Now, the following year in 2023, his ERA jumped pretty high. He ended the year with a 4.09 with a three wins and one loss record. I mean, granted, the Astros were pretty dominant in their batting in 22 and 23, of course, because 22, they went to the World Series. And he pitched only 50 innings last season but he did throw 51 strikeouts so in every inning he statistically more than one strikeout every time he was out there on the mound his whip went up to a 1.24 now he's 32 years old and he's got a big arm he's not he's not a slow pitcher he doesn't really mix up a ton he has a fastball splitter and a curve that he utilizes the best he can now one of the interesting things when i was looking into mlb and in the reports they said that he had a whiff rate of 40 percent or higher in 2023 which sounded amazing to me he, he didn't mlb you gotta fact check yourself you're gonna be putting the stuff out there checking on fan graphs and also baseball it's Vaughn and a couple of other places for the record and just his percentages he had a whiff rate of 30 percent still not bad at all i i'm very happy with whiff rates being up anything above 25 percent if you're more than a quarter of the time making them completely whiff and miss the ball I like you in our bullpen. That's That sounds great to me. Now, he's over in the 96th percentile based on baseball savant for his fastball velocity. He averages at around 98.2 miles per hour, which is... <laughs> fine with me looking deeper into it he's not much of a ground ball pitcher which some teams would actually see that as a negative you have someone who's pitching and most of the hitters are hitting fly balls you run the risk of hitting home runs but given it's seattle and the whole first half of the season is relatively cold getting balls hit in the air most likely going to be fly balls for an out just given the statistics and given the time of year now this is also keeping in mind that matt brash may be out for the beginning of the season we don't know how long there has been a some updates saying that he's going to be fine only a couple weeks after opening day. Others say that they're not too sure because they really want to make sure his elbow is 100%. They said that surgery wasn't needed for Matt Brash, but given the fact that he's already back on the mound playing catch and throwing, there's nothing saying that come two or three weeks into the season, since we do depend on him quite a bit, especially last year we did, that he could re-aggravate that elbow and really cause some long-lasting injuries to where he does need surgery and he's done for the whole season. Going back to Ryan Statnick, his barreled percent percentage is is actually pretty pretty good he's in the 63rd percentile which might not seem that great but only seven percent of the time the batters are actually barreling up the ball on him and if you're staying under 10 percent for a reliever i mean we really need that in our bullpen as far as reliever depth if you're coming to a ballpark where the factors are that fly balls typically don't leave the yard now he's expecting batting average against batters is pretty good as well i mean he's in the 76th percentile with the expected to be about 222 batting average against him now i'll take that i mean even the best of teams or even the worst of teams are looking to not have a player on their team batting under 225 or under honestly 250 so if the average player is going to have a 222 batting average against him while he's on the mound i'm perfectly okay with that plus going off of last season being at a 4.09 era and yet he was still throwing a strikeout every single ending that he went out literally every single 
single inning going out, he threw a strikeout. That's something that we can definitely see in the Mariners bullpen to really help support them while they have injuries. Like I mentioned, Matt Brash, we also have an injury with Gregory Santos, who I was ecstatic for and I figured would be a, one of the biggest key to the trifecta in the bullpen. But as of right now, we're still waiting to see what's going to happen with Gregory Santos and just having one more elite arm in that bullpen to maybe replace Gregory Santos in the meantime. This time of year in the beginning of the season, fly ball pitcher, very low percentage of getting balls barreled up by other batters. His K rate's at 23.9% and his whiff rate is all the way up to 30.7%. I'm going to take it. I'm, I'm excited. This is a good guy to have on the team. I'll accept the fact that he's a former Astro, Ugh. but you know what? I'm happy to have him. His fastball run value is at the 84th percentile at a value of nine. That's fairly high. In fact, comparably, one of the best closers in the game, Josh Hader, if you've guys seen any of my previous videos, I did a comparison with him when it came to Gregory Santos. Josh Hader has a fastball run value of 12. He's now he's already all the way up at an 89 percentile, but a 12 and Stanek has a nine. That's pretty damn close when we're comparing to the probably the most elite closer that we have in the game right now with one of the largest contracts in the MLB to Stanek, who seems to be a really off the radar of anybody. And it's not even making really big news that they picked him up. Another elite pitcher that actually used to play for the Mariners and came up in the Mariners pipeline is Freddie Peralta, who is the ace for the Brewers now that Corbin Burns is over in Baltimore. Freddie Peralta has the same value as Josh Hader with a 12 run value at the 89th percentile. Very close, again, to Stanek's fastball run value. Now, also keep this in mind, for starting pitchers, the whiff percentage of 33.6% is at the 92nd percentile for starting pitchers, and that is exactly what Peralta is throwing. Now, for Stanek, as a relief pitcher, his whiff rate is at 30.7% and he's at 82 percentile. So imagine if he was a starting pitcher, he's going to be equating up there with some of the best starting pitchers in the baseball. He's not, so I get it. It's not exactly relevant in what we're saying, but I'm trying to be comparative here. If you were to compare it to some of the best players out there, especially the best starting pitchers that are out there in the league, he's very comparable to them in a lot of areas. Granted, he is a bit lower on the hard hitter percentage. 44% of the time, there's a hard hit. Only 30% of the times he's able to get a ground ball at about a fourth percentile, which is one of the worst in, in baseball. And the chase rate of batters is only 27.4%. So yeah, it's more towards the lower area. So he's not getting people to chase ball that are out of the zone but when he does throw in the zone that whiff rate 30 percent is pretty damn good i'm going to assume that justin hollander and jared depoto probably looked at this and saw that he would be very elite to have in t-mobile park at least during the colder time of the season is a low risk for giving up a ton of runs especially with his average for the last three seasons to be hitting an average of a strikeout per inning on the mound this is just going to add depth we have our two right-handed pitchers that are now out and we won't know exactly what the ending of those injuries are going to be come opening day so we're just going to keep a close lookout to add depth with some who has a lot of experience is hard throwing and is pretty consistent in year to year you know yeah i'm okay with this and i think mariner fans should be looking forward to having him on the mound and be a good reliever keep the name stanick in your back pocket whenever you see him on the mound he performs like 2022 he's definitely going to be an ace maybe a setup pitcher for munoz that's all i have for you guys today short video wanted to get to the point Thank you guys for joining in. If you haven't already subscribed, like the video now, leave a comment below on your thoughts of Stanek. If you hate him because he's a former Astro or if you like him because he's coming now to play for the Mariners to maybe shut out the Astros in the playoffs. I'm excited. You're excited. And we'll see you opening day. Later.